Hi, this is JP Morgan. I'm with Miss Social Media here, who we had to pry her phone out of her hand so we could do our introduction. So, and this is... Brenda O'Sullivan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And we're doing a camera comparison with three cameras. So we're gonna look at the Mark IV and the Sony A7R II, right, Brenda? Yeah, the Sony A7R II. Two. <laughs> and the Nikon D810. So as we come to the end of 2016, we've got a great giveaway here on the Slime Lens. We're gonna give away $4,000 worth of equipment. So go to theslimelens.com. There's fabulous stuff for a lot of our sponsors, including one of our business courses. So go to theslimelens.com and sign up so you can win today. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at picture quality, the best picture quality on each of these cameras. We're gonna look at autofocus features, how they stack up against each other. We're gonna look at dynamic range, take it out in the sun, just see how it looks in the, in the sunlight. And then we're gonna look at low light kind of situation. What is the ISO and how, at what point do the blacks start to break up on each of these cameras? How do they compare to each other? Anything Most else? importantly, I think we also wanna look at the handling of the cameras because they are all very different in how they look and feel and how they shoot and the, the menus and features and stuff will, you know, you may hate one camera and we love it, we'll see. Yeah, we're shooting with all native lenses. So Nikon on the Nikon, the Sony lens on the Sony, Canon lens on the Canon, to see how each system stacks up natively to each other. And we're shooting a very loud place with a very loud truck. So we're gonna start with picture quality. We're gonna shoot an image on each of these cameras, blow those up and look at them side by side. So because we're shooting on location here, we have to be fast because you never know when they're gonna kick us out. So rather than just setting up one tripod and switching between cameras and stuff, which takes a lot longer to do, we're gonna set up three tripods at the same time and have all three cameras on the tripods ready to go and shoot our photos all at once. Okay, so we've set these at 100 ISO mm -hmm. and 2.8. We don't want the lens to be wide open. Right, because that won't help us determine how, no. you know. Because your lens is not gonna muddiness. perform wide open as well as it is stop down. So 2.8, we're stop down two, two stops on these lenses. Yeah, yeah, it should be ample. So 1 25th of a second, 2.8, 100 ISO, and we set our um, Kelvin at 6,000 degrees. So we're gonna set our white balance on 6,000 because even though it's a nice sunny day, we're in the middle of an alley, so our primary source is the blue sky. So to warm up the colors a bit, we'll set it to 6,000 Kelvin. The goal here is to get a direct comparison between all of the cameras, so we wanna make sure that all the settings are exactly the same before we fire the shot. That way we'll know any color differences or exposure differences between the sensors. So looking at the picture quality of each of these cameras, there's the Canon. We're, we're, we're punched 300 super here. far in here. Yeah. But you can already tell there's a little bit of stepping in her eye, in her mm -hmm. eyelid. You can kind of see the pixels starting to come out. And that's fine, we're punching it like yeah. a thousand percent. But, but if you go to the Nikon, you go to the Nikon, it's clear. It's pretty oh, it's clear. It's pretty dang clean, pretty clear. A little brighter too. It's interesting how it's brighter. Yeah, I did notice the curve on the Nikon. I even I even noticed that shooting on set because I kept thinking, is this overexposed? But we used a meter, so they're all properly exposed, but this is where you see the gamma curve that the raw processor applies makes the Nikon and the Sony a little bit brighter than it does the Canon. Well, now you look at the Sony, that Sony is, it's a clean image, it's a bright image. It's not, it's not super contrasty, but it has no. some deep blacks. It's actually less contrasty than the, uh, the Nikon, Nikon yeah. much less. So you see it in the skin tones. So take a look at that and see what you think. I, we're not here to make any conclusions like this is the better one. I'm just saying we see less contrast in the, probably the least contrast in the Canon, the most contrast in the Nikon, and a nice uh, contrast in the Sony. We see a really clean, sharp image with that Nikon. Yeah. Very clean. And the Sony, are, Sony and Nikon are both very sharp. Canon, not so much. But then again, at 30 megapixels, you really have to ask, like, what, what am I doing this for? Am I going to just print this in an 8x11 yeah. and hang it on my wall, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a little test with the autofocus here. Actually, I'm going to go to as close as possible, like 1.5 feet. And then I'm just going to, Brenda's right there. I'm going to take a picture over here. And I'm just going to do that five times in a row and make the autofocus pull the focus onto her face and shoot. So I'll do two and three. That's a long ways. It's a little slow there, isn't it? Four, it takes a second. Two, looking right here. And three. Okay, so we're trying to get the Sony. The Sony is just... A maze of menus. <laughs> and it doesn't want to be out of focus. No, I won't be out of focus. So the, thing really about the, so the thing about the Sony camera is that you have the focus ring on these lenses is actually not anything. It's just a ring that has electronic contacts that communicate with the camera. So the camera controls the focus of the lens at all times. 
So if I turn this ring and it's on autofocus, doesn't do anything, just stays in focus because the sensor is saying, no, we need to focus here. So we're trying to figure out a workaround. But the problem is, what if I want the background to focus? What if I want to focus on a person who's right back there? Right. I mean, right now, Kenneth, take a picture of me in focus. Well, I would have to move the camera. Focus me, Kenneth, please. <laughs> you can't, you're right, you can't. I mean, oh, except, could I do a focus Can lock? Can you lock it there? I can. You can lock it. So as soon as you press the shutter, it'll lock it'll the... Lock. Okay. So we do what was close to a near to far. So rack the focus close and take five images in a, in a row. Rack it close, take a picture. Rack it close, take a picture. So it's having to go from near to far. Then you go the opposite. You bring the talent up close and you're going to focus in the background and then you're going to have to rack it to, to close. Okay, well let's look at it. This is the Canon. We're trying to pull the focus far to the subject a ways away from us. And you know what? These are pretty consistently They're Very consistent. It. Very, very every, consistent. Every time it looks very the same. Very consistent. Now, if we look at the, the uh, uh, Nikon, as far as its consistency, uh, it, it hits it right on. I mean, it hits it. Now, on the Sony, it's so automated, you, this test doesn't even mean anything because it's, you can't... The, the camera, it's uh, well, the lens is just going to keep everything in focus. So if we look at now as doing the, uh, the camera's focused far, you're going to pull it up close to someone close in front of you. When you do that, and we look at these images, uh, this is the Canon. They all seem like pretty acceptable. I mean, they do. a little bit of sharpening on a couple and it would be okay. Yeah. But now when we go over to the Nikon, it's interesting. It's almost startling how it's sharp they are. It's mind-blowing. They're just sharp. So much sharper. Part of that's got to be the resolution. But part honestly, I think part of it is how the yeah. autofocus was performing. But out of the five shots, the Nikon just missed one completely. It took a picture and the autofocus didn't even try. It was yeah. like, and I don't know if that was user error or what, but it seemed to me like out of five images, we got one that just plain was gone. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where it was at. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, in a, it, what, what do you pick? Do you pick the camera that consistently focuses pretty good or the camera that's like <laughs> always dead on except for that one time where it's not? Well, it's the one time where like, you know, the President of the United States is shaking <laughs> your mom's hand. <laughs> well, really, really, a good photographer who's shooting the President of the United States is probably not autofocusing, <laughs> you know. That's probably, <laughs> probably not a smart idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, a lot of, a lot of news guys use autofocus, there's no yeah. doubt, because it's fast moving and, and that, so. So anyway, <laughs> I think there's some give and take on those, and I don't know what the conclusion is. So you know, bringing up the autofocus versus manual focus thing too, the it used to be when when you're only shooting 20 megapixels, you have a little bit more wiggle room. Whereas with a 40 megapixel camera, even some of the images we were shooting would be like, oh man, that wasn't quite in focus, and I thought yeah. it was. You know, it's very hard to tell. Go ahead, walking towards me. So in this autofocus test, what we want to do is have our talent walk towards us and see if we can just track it. Yeah, the autofocus. each of the cameras, well the Canon and the Nikon have a servo setting so that you can actually not release the shutter. Continuous the, tracking. Yeah, yeah, you just push it down and it'll lock onto your subject and try and hold it as it moves around. Yeah. Uh, really useful. It's not something I use all the time, so it was new. I was very impressed. Yep. The Sony, though, has a very cool feature which we use called face detection, which is surprisingly good. And the great thing about face detection is that um, with the other one, I would have to keep the zone or whatever spot I was focusing on on the subject, whereas with the face detection, she could go this way and this way and this way, and I could keep the same composition, and it would just track her face and keep that in focus. Yeah, I was moving the camera off to the right and the left, and so she was moving all over the place, and it was still able to track her as it yeah. came towards me here as she walked towards me. The Canon has face detection mode, but it's in live view. Oh, yeah, so you yeah. have to shoot out of live view. It's in yeah, live which view, is, which is a different thing. So uh, I thought they all worked, they worked great, you know, uh, yep. But I thought the Sony was hands down a little a better. You think it just, was the best one? Well, just because it has right, pixels yeah. all the way to the corner, so this person could be walking right along the edge of frame versus it just had a lot yeah. of options for keeping that focus. So I thought in, on this one, it was the only one I feel pretty comfortable saying the Sony, I think, was kind of kind of the, the upper game. hand. Yeah. You know, image for image, they all focused pretty well. Yeah, they um, look good. And I would say the Nikon did seem to have a little bit of a stutter when she got really close was changing distance yeah, really rapidly. Right. It took a second for it to take a shot. Well, um, sometimes it's trying to find something to focus yeah, on, you know, yeah. so it hesitates a little bit. And not having so many focus points makes it a little harder. Yeah. Whereas if you got all these focus points the Sony does, it just, it's gonna right. work a lot better. Right. So we were testing the dynamic range. At this level with most stills cameras these days, okay, it's all good. pretty similar. But we thought we'd give it a go since Nikon actually does tend to have a little bit of an edge. We thought we'd check it out. 
So in this situation, we've got her in direct sunlight, we've got shadows behind her, and then I've got a white wall in the background. So that way we can see all three of those things. Her, direct sun shadow, and the wall back there. Maybe you look right here. Is that too hard with the sun? And then up here. That'll give us a really good idea of, there's just a really, quite a range there. So and we'll shoot several of those, over. then I do a, a stop over, a stop over, a stop over, a stop under. So, well, not a full stop. Do it in one third increments. So go up a third, up two thirds, up one stop. Perfect. Down a third, down two thirds, down one. So the cannon looks looks fabulous. It's I mean, really there's a nice. lot of detail there. It's really in the nice shadows. curve. You know, it's like got that nice contrast out of the middle, but the shadows mm -hmm. aren't like super super dark, and the highlights are still all there in her face. Yeah, looks great. The Ni Nikon's pretty contrasty. Much more contrasty. So. <laughs> yeah, much more contrasty. Her face is like. Well, look at the building in the white. background. Yeah, the building in the background is almost. We're gone. seeing a little bit of detail on the cannon. But when it gets to the Nikon, it's just blown away. Honestly, it's kind of, after looking at a couple of these images, I'd expose the Nikon two-thirds of a stop slower than it would. Yeah, or it's, lower it's than brighter. The, it's about two-thirds of a stop yeah. brighter than the Canon. Now the Sony has a, there's just it's a great open shadows. Look at the building yeah. back in the very back, the small building back there. Look at, there's trying to be detail. Yeah, there's, there's a little more detail in the highlights. There's a little more detail in the building in the back. Kind of seems like the Sony has more dynamic range than Nikon. It feels like it does. I mean, what that relates to, as far as you know, how many stops or whatever. But yeah. it's just it's a little more open. The dynamic range seems a little more full. I mean, the thing is, with all these cameras at this level, you're talking about a difference of you know half a stop of dynamic range between <laughs> all of these. So it's not a huge deal, but it is kind of nice to know how it's going to roll off. If you want to protect the highlights more, protect the shadows more. With the Nikon, I would definitely say protect the highlights more. I think. So now we're inside, we're going to do our test here inside, the low light test, where you have very low light, dark background, uh, and we're just going to see how far we can push the ISO on each of these cameras and what they look like. Now if we were shooting a situation for real, the goal would be to expose so you get nice, pretty exposure with the tree lights, but not have to slow your shutter speed down like crazy so you want to be able to boost that ISO. So let's see how far we can push it. This is really good stuff to know, especially if you're doing events, um, because you get in those uncontrolled lighting situations, or you don't have uh, the strobes that you might need to have, or you're you know, allowed to use strobes, and you really want to know um, how far can I push the ISO before the image breaks in order to control the shutter and your aperture the ways that you want to. So we want to keep uh, as many variables as we can consistent across the, all the cameras. So we're going to shoot a 1.8 aperture, which is the uh, most open our slowest lens is. And then our white balance is going to be 4400 across all the cameras, so we'll be able to see color differences between the different uh, sensors and then we'll have to adjust our shutter speed as we adjust our ISO upward. So let's start with the Canon. There's 100 ISO. It's clean. 200 ISO. Really clean. We're going to see it over here in this kind of, uh, the kind of warm area around the Christmas tree. Uh, there's 400. Go to 800. Starting to see a little bit of noise over on the warmth by the Christmas tree on the far left of the frame. Not a lot though. Tiny bit. At this, at this megapixel count, the noise is super tiny, so you have to really boost it before you see it. 3200, we've seen it in her face, so we've seen it in... Yeah, you can see it a little bit in the mid-tones around the tree, like we said before. Bit. It's appearing there now before it appears in the blacks. Yeah, there's 6400 ISO. We're starting to see it more, I mean, see a little bit in her... Well, Check her hair, zoom in. Oh yeah, her hair, because... You can kind of see it, but... It, 6400 is, is incredible. Clean. That's it's like really incredibly clean. It's like I, that's like ASA 400. For yeah, me. this is this what 12,800. This is 12,800 now. It's starting to look a little. It's grainy now. It's a little it's grainy. grainy. It's grainy. I mean, I'd still use it in certain settings, but it's breaking at 12,800 ISO. Now we're looking. We got grain going everywhere. <laughs> but even to my eye, that almost just looks like film grain. Oh, you know, it's it, really pleasing. It's, it, not, it's not. It's not yes. colorful grain at all. It's not a digital looking mm -hmm. kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot more like uh, like film grain. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It looks it looks nice. You could use this as a like a vintage kind of shot. Yeah. That would look fabulous. <laughs> all right, so now let's look at the Nikon. So there's Nikon at 100. Again, the Nikon's more contrasty. More contrasty. 200. So there's the 400. Still, still clean very as clean. And there's 800. Still very clean. Go to 1600. You would expect the Nikon to perform even a little bit better than the Canon just because of the megapixel count. Your noise is going to be smaller. That's so. true. Now at 3200, I'm seeing it in her oh, face. Yeah, her face around her cheek where the shadow yeah. starts. The noise really starts to show up in the low mid tones first. Yeah. But that's already, I mean, we're at 3200 and we go to 6400. 
the, that grain on the left hand side became very pronounced. You see it on her face. Then we go to uh, 12,800. Certainly the grain showed up now. Seems a little bit noisier than the Canon to my eye. It does. Just a tiny bit. So that's as far, that's as high as we can go on there. I think both, well, I think of, these, both of these Canons might have expanded ranges, but yeah. the expanded range is just, uh, you, you could just do the same thing in Photoshop with that. Yeah. All right, so there's the, uh, there's a the Sony. There's 100 ISO, 200. We know a Sony's going to hold up till 4, 8, 16. It's pretty clean. The noise seems a little more blocky. It's that a little blocky thing. on that side over there. On the left side, did. Then we go up to uh, 3200. Yeah. Starting to break up in that, on the left hand side in this kind of you know, mid tones. Definitely grainy at 6400. Mm -hmm. uh, in the mid tones on the far left, her face still looks pretty dang clean, man. Kind of seems cleaner than the other two. It does to me too. Yeah. That's at 6400. Then we go to uh, 12,800. What I will say, I am noticing that the darker parts of the image are getting darker. So the contrast is increasing a little bit as you go up. I didn't see quite the same effect on the other two cameras. Yeah, you're right. This little contrast is much heavier. I'm seeing her hair and that mm -hmm. on the side, yep. At this point, At this you're, point you're seeing fixed pattern noise. So you have the lines coming across her face. We, we do. We're starting to see that banding or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd say most CMOS cameras, if you push the ISO too far, you'll see the patterns in the... 51,200? The banding is really bad. Really bad. Just, yeah, exactly. just, do don't, just don't shoot. Just don't do that. Nice. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to see what uh, 124,000 is. 102,000. I'm sorry, 102,000. You're going to have yourself. <laughs> it's just <laughs> grain and banding. It isn't even that it's. If this was just nice grain, you didn't have that banding, this could be interesting looking. You know? Yeah, you could but use the it in like a banding is just really terrible. Pinch. Yeah, very, very <laughs> bad. Okay, so there we have the ISO test. So, how do you think they shook out? To my eye, I think the Canon's grain looked the nicest, mm -hmm. but I think it did get, it probably did get noisiest the soonest. Not to say that it was very noisy, but it, the you noise really showed had to up pick. earliest. You had to really pick. Nikon again was way, con way more contrasty, but mm. the Sony built contrast as, a, as, as the ISO went, went yeah. up. But if any I, of these, you could feel comfortable into. into I'd say 6,400, you could be okay. Yeah. 3,200, oh, yeah, okay. you'd be just fine. Absolutely. For me, on the Mark III, I didn't like to shoot the Mark III above 640, you know? Yeah. I was always very cautious mm -hmm. about for stills. So, but I think you have a, a much wider range here with all these cameras. And so. again, you you got to consider what's your output, you know? Is yeah. this like fashion images blown yeah. up on a billboard or is yeah. this, you know, family pictures? Absolutely. So we've been looking at three great cameras, the Sony a7R 2 the Canon 5D Mark IV, and... The Nikon D810. A10. There are a lot of numbers and letters involved in these things. Numbers we and letters. They really should just start naming them like magical creatures, you know. <laughs> the Sony Ogre the, and the, the, the unicorn. Canon Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Much <one>. more memorable. <laughs> all right, so there you have it. There's our great suggestion of the day for Ken, for all camera manufacturers. Go with mystical creatures. We know you're, you're watching, yeah. so. <laughs> so Give us some feedback. What did you learn in this? What camera did you like the most? Let's hear your comments. What? How do you apply these cameras to what you do? Is this camera better for this kind of work? Is this camera better for that kind of work? You know, what do you think is really, you know, how do these cameras relate to what you do and what do you, which one do you think is better? Well, and the great thing about photography, you guys have it so easy, is your images have been surpassing film for like 10 years. So at, you know, a couple thousand dollars and you're buying into a great system. And really at that point, I said this earlier, if you can't take a good picture with any of these cameras, it's not the camera's fault. <laughs> so how are you right. applying and what, what uses do you have and what needs do you have that each camera fits specifically? Yeah. So also, let us know what you want to see next. We have a lot of comparisons coming up and we always want feedback on what we're doing right, what, we, what you'd like to see different, and what kind of products you'd like us to review in the future. It's kind of like trying to uh, remold Jello, you know, because it's like trying to get all these technical things into a format that will give you good information so mm -hmm. that you can, you know. So here's our remolded jello for the day. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Our business coaching class is going on every single day. People are using those materials to change the direction of their businesses and to grow their businesses. So get to thuslandlings.com and sign up for our business coaching class. Once a month, you get to speak with me. We'll talk about the problems that you're facing. We have the opportunity to mentor together to help you grow your business. So go to thuslandlands.com and sign up for it today.
We're still rolling. Okay, <laughs> subscribe. 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 Please subscribe. You should do it. It's a cry. The button. My heart. Subscribe. Click the button. Nice mustache there, Ken. Oh, thank you. It helps. Don't you love to, that mustache? This way I don't have to filter my coffee. Just strain it. So much easier.